app with everything. Download the Everything Lubbock app. This is KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Kickoff. Sponsored by Covenant Medical Group Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. All right, we're almost done here live at Jones AT&T Stadium. We just heard the Matador song behind us. I think the team's about to take the field, so we got to give you what to watch for in this contest before we go, and we'll let you go first. Yeah, I'm going to start with the uh, Texas Tech secondary because we've talked about it for now a couple of different weeks. You can say whatever you want about it, whether it's a lack of depth, whether it's just guys haven't stepped up. The secondary hasn't been good. Mm -hmm. Doug Coleman has been a bright spot, I'll give you that. Yep. But in terms of interceptions, yeah, but... Outside that, giving up yards has been horrific to some really, really bad passing offenses, especially West Virginia. We see Austin Kendall get pulled, and we probably think, oh, well, he didn't have a good day. He had a lot of passing yards, and then Jared Dagey came in, and he had a lot of passing yards. So if TCU can't establish the running game or if that front seven has any sort of success against it, TCU will go to the air and then I assume the passing offense if they have success there, will open up the running offense. Yeah, you know? to go back to that you definitely don't want TCU to be able to pass the ball down the field. West Virginia, once they got down the field, they couldn't run it in. This TCU team can definitely probably run the ball and that's where I go. I go trying to stop that run game initially because to be honest with you, I think the more we see Max Duggan throw the football down the field, the more likely that the Red Raiders might have success intercepting that ball or ta uh, batting it down. I just think making him beat you as opposed to the running backs is what you want to do. And here's an interesting idea. We talked about, considering with what the defense has done, especially in the past few games, Keith Patterson earlier this week said he doesn't believe in dip and don't break. Which is interesting, <laughs> considering that's kind of what his defense has lived off of a little bit. He certainly did that last week. All right, we've set our piece on the game. Let's check in with Ryan Hyatt back at the studio with his final call. Thanks, David. I want to go back in history a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Another 11 a.m. game against another freshman quarterback. Texas Tech holds off Oklahoma State. All right, there's your prediction right there. No, I do see some similarities here. You've got a freshman quarterback for TCU that if you can make him uncomfortable, heat him up a little bit, turn Jordan Brooks loose and Broderick Washington, you've got a chance to disrupt. I think TCU, in order to take advantage of Texas Tech's issues, has to get away from what they normally do, which is run the football, and they've done it quite well 57% of the time this year. So maybe you watch out for play action passing against TCU, but I really think Texas Tech is the better team slightly and will hold on for a victory this week against the Horn Frogs, getting one game closer to bowl eligibility. How does it end up? 30-27. TCU gets a late score to make it close, but it's Texas Tech holding on for the win, and that, my friends, is the final call. Eric Kelly is uh, insanely jealous of that shirt right now. All right, that's give our time. 20 bucks for it. <laughs> that's our time here on Countdown to Kickoff. Up next, we've got Indiana and Penn State, and be sure to join us for a recap of Red Raiders and Horn Frogs after Baylor and Oklahoma, which kicks off tonight at 6.30 here on KMAC.